This is video 13 in our series uh, Topics in Tensor Analysis. A uh, reminder that the uh, playlist for all the videos is featured at the uh, website digital-university.org. Okay, um, in this video we want to give an another uh, demonstration as to how to define the metric tensor and then actually derive the uh, metric tensor for a cylindrical set of coordinates. Now, in the previous video, we were working with um, just these curvilinear coordinates, where we had an X system, where the axes are labeled with these superscript numbers, and a Y curvilinear coordinate system, and then we had a displacement vector like this, which also could be expressed the same vector could be expressed in the uh, y curvilinear coordinate system. And the arc length of that is designated ds. And what we derived in the last video was here we are in the uh, x coordinate system with the x curvilinear coordinates. And ds squared was equal to this expression where this is the metric tensor. And then in the y curvilinear coordinate system, same type of deal, dy, dy now, but here again we have the metric tensor. So obviously an analogous pattern in each case. Um, if we're dealing with Cartesian coordinates, then ds squared is real simple. It's just the Kronecker delta dxm dxn. And in the last video, we showed that for, I didn't show it really derived, or not really derived, either just kind of defined that this metric tensor, GY with subscripts RS, is this description right here on this side of the equation. And again, we don't so much derive it as we just encountered this in the equation and we said this is what is called the metric tensor. And we're going to do the same kind of setup um, in this video and then we're going to be tackling it from a slightly different direction. So let's say that we have just uh, two curvilinear coordinates u1 and u2 and they have the tangential vectors e1 and e2 and let's say again we have a displacement vector here and that displacement vector we'll call dr. Now r is not the position vector, it's just a general displacement vector that we have depicted right here. Well here then we could say that dr, we could write it like this, it would equal the differential of dr along the e1 tangent axis plus, same thing for here, So that would be our general expression for dr. And if we had more coordinates, then we could just keep going along like this. And so forth. And there's an abbreviated way that we can write out this expression. Well, here we have the repeated index i, and whenever we have an index that is repeated like this, that is appearing downstairs and then again upstairs, that automatically um, assumes that we are summing over that. So we have i would be equal to 1, then i equals 2, then i equals 3, and so forth. So 
dr would just be equal to this expression. Now in general we know that ds squared equals dr dot dr. Where I can write this as like this dot, and this one we can write like this And this we can write as then EI dot EJ Well here we're taking the dot product of the tangent vectors for a particular coordinate system. So here then we have ds squared equals ei dot ej dui duj. But we can also write it like this equals the metric tensor ij dui duj. So this clearly implies then that the dot product of the tangential vectors is equal to the metric tensor. And to get a better feel for exactly what this means, I think the best way is to just uh, illustrate with an example. So let's consider um, cylindrical coordinates. And what we're going to do then is derive the metric tensor for a cylindrical coordinate system. So just to remind ourselves, here is a point out in space. It has a position vector r. Here we have Cartesian coordinates. Now you notice at this time we labeled our coordinate axis as x, y, and z. In all the other previous videos, we labeled it as x1, x2, x3 with the superscripts. And then the unit vectors we had as e1, e2, e3, and we underlined them so that we didn't confuse them with the tangential vectors for the curvilinear coordinates. Here, we're going back now to this kind of nomenclature. And throughout the videos, we'll kind of shift back and forth between different nomenclature systems. And the reason for that is when you go through different textbooks, typically they have different symbols. So part of the battle here is just getting used to dealing with these expressions using different symbols. So here then we'll have x, y, z, and the unit vectors will be i, j, k. Now for the cylindrical coordinate system, we have the position vector r, then we can drop a line perpendicular down to the xy axis, and that puts us at a position or a distance rho from the origin, and that makes an angle psi with the x-axis. So for cylindrical coordinates, we have rho, psi, and then z. And we have the tangential vectors. There is e rho, that points in the direction of rho, obviously. There is e psi, pointing in the direction along the change in psi. And then there's e z, pointing in the direction of change along the z axis. So the cylindrical coordinates have three tangential vectors. And in the remainder of the video, we're going to call this e1, e2, and e3. Now, we stated that 
g i j equals e i dot e j. Now for the cylindrical coordinates, we know that the position vector r can be expressed like this. And again, we're not going to derive this. Uh, we're assuming this is common knowledge for everyone. So now, to determine the tangential vectors, this would be e rho. We're calling it e1 now. That would be the partial of r with respect to rho. That's just cosine phi plus sine phi. E2 is E theta. That's the partial of R with respect to theta. Or rather, that this is called psi. So the partial of R with respect to psi. And that would be minus rho sine of psi plus rho cosine of psi. And then E3, we're calling this E3 now. That's the partial of R with respect to z, and that's just going to be 1 times the unit vector k. All right, now we have our definition for the metric tensor, ei dot ej. So we could have e1 dot e1, e1 dot e2, e1 dot e3. This would be g11 g12, g13. Then we'd have e2 dot e1, e2 dot e2, e2 dot e3, and so forth. So the metric tensor in cylindrical coordinates is going to have nine different components. And what we want to do is determine what the components are. So g11, g21, g31, and so forth. So we have G11, G12, G13, G21, G22, G23, and finally for the third row, So there are the components um, of the metric tensor for cylindrical coordinates. G11, that is equal to E1 dot E1. So we are going to have the cosine of psi times I plus the sine of psi times J. and we take the dot product with itself. So this will equal i dot i is 1 with the cosine squared of psi. j dot j is 1 plus sine squared of psi. Of course, the cross terms are 0 because i dot j and j dot i are 0. This equals 1. So g11 is 1. OK, now we want to determine g12. So that's going to be the dot product of E1 dot E2. Well, let's look at it. Here we have I dot I is 1, so that's minus rho sine phi times the cosine of phi. Then we'll have J dot J is 1. That'll be plus rho sine phi cosine phi. Those cancel. And of course, the cross terms are also 0 because I dot J is 0. So we know that this G12 is 0. And if G12 is 0, so is this, because that's just the dot product of this and this. 
we just did that. So this is zero. Now we have to determine g22. So that would be the dot product of this with itself. So let's write it out and do it. We have minus rho times the sine of psi unit vector i plus rho times the cosine of psi unit vector j. And we're going to take the dot product with minus rho sine of psi plus rho cosine of psi j. And we forgot our unit vector here. Okay, so we have i dot i is 1. That will give us rho squared sine squared rho squared sine squared psi. Here we have rho squared cosine squared. And the cross terms are zero, so this equals rho squared. So we know what this is. G22 is rho squared. Now have to determine for G23. So that would be this dot this, i dot k is 0, j dot k is 0. So E23 is 0 and E32 is going to be 0. We have k dot i, k dot j. So E23 and E32 are both zero. And I think we stated before that G13 is zero because that's the dot product of this with this. And of course, three G31 is the dot product of this with this, and that's going to be zero again. So, this is zero, and this is zero, and G33, that's the dot product of k dot k, that's going to be equal to one. So there is the metric tensor, considering this expression for it, there is the metric tensor when we are dealing with cylindrical coordinates. And it was pretty straightforward to find. The reason it was so easy is because these are orthogonal to one another. So the only time that we're going to have non-zero expressions is on the diagonal elements where we have e1 dot e1, e2 dot e2, e3 dot e3. Everything else um, is zero. Now, if we're dealing with a more generalized coordinate system for these u1, u2, u3, and here then their tangential vectors are not perpendicular orthogonal to one another, then in addition to the diagonal elements, we're going to have non-zero expressions on the off diagonal elements. So obviously then the metric tensor would be a lot more complicated expression. Um, okay, that's all I want to say in this video. Again, to show that here is a, another way of defining the metric tensor. Um, it's completely consistent with what we did earlier. And then here was an expression for the metric tensor with um, cylindrical coordinates. Now come back and join us in the next video. Um, we're going to consider the raising and lowering properties of the metric tensor. So come back, transfer that video, and we'll continue along here with our discussions.